Okay, so today we will do on differentiation, uh, uh, differentiation chapter, but based on form 5 chapter 2. So let me start with a bit of intro first. I'll go through all the subtopic as usual, so no worries. Okay, so we'll talk about the calculus field of mathematics today, Vidang calculus. Okay, differentiation and integration come under this uh, Vidang of mathematics called calculus. Okay, so actually, to be very fair, algebra is the basic for this differentiation and integration. Kamu kena kuasai algebra, kamu kalau nak mahe bab pembezaan ini. This is an important part because a lot of things in differentiation involve your algebra. You cannot avoid it. So, kamu kena kukola. Algebra kamu, dari matematik kamu, your basic maths. Okay, so let's talk a bit about differentiation first. Okay, so first, oh, sorry, too light. Okay, so first thing I want you all to know about differentiation, we analyze the word together, guys. Kita analisis setiap uh, satu perkataan ini. So differentiation, one keyword I can bring out from here is the word difference. Okay, you can see this very clearly. Differentiation and difference related, right? Ada perkaitan. So what I mean by difference? It means that your differentiated equation, persamaan yang telah melalui pembezaan tu, kena berbeza dengan persamaan asal. Okay, the differentiated equation must, okay, must, uh, guys, must be different from original equation. Okay, this is the key point. Whenever you do differentiation, make sure your differentiated equation is always different from your original equation. This is the first point you all must know. Okay? So, different from original equation. Uh, who is this? Don't mind the chat box, huh, guys. <laughs> Okay, so uh, okay, so this is the first thing. Okay, so differentiation, we got a few parts over here. So first part I want to talk about is about limits. Okay, hard. We call in BM, it's called hard. Limits or hard. So this one, if they ask in the question paper, usually kalau nak tanya soalan ini, this one will come in paper one only. Okay, kertas satu saja. Sebab yang ni sangat pendek. The idea of limits. Okay. So one good example for me to talk about, hey, before this, sorry guys, I want to tell something else. I got a lot of things to share with you all, that's why I need to think carefully. Okay, so first of all, when we talk about differentiation, uh, saya nak bagi tahu satu tips untuk kamu, macam mana nak kuasai bab ni, how to master this chapter. Uh. There are actually a few chapters related to this chapter that you all must be strong in. Kebanyakan bab-bab ni datang dari bab tingkatan empat, your form four basic in AdMats. Okay, so one of it is actually your quadratic function. Quadratic function, you must be strong. Kalau kamu nak mahir, bab pembezaan. Okay, fungsi quadratic, first one. Second chapter, you all must be strong. Indices, third and log. I'm set for... What do you mean? Oh my god. Sorry, guys. I got all these people inside here. Okay, another topic you all must know is indices, third and log. Okay, second. First, second. Third one you all must know to be good in this chapter, coordinate geometry. Okay, bab yang ni. Geometry coordinate. Kena uh, bagus untuk uh, mahe bab ni. Third chapter. Fourth chapter you all must be strong adalah integration, pengamiran. Okay, guys, can you understand this? Boleh faham briefing ini? This is the fourth chapter you all must master to master differentiation. Okay, macam mana nak kuasai bab pembezaan ini? Okay, guys, up till here, can understand? This fourth chapter, you all must be really strong to understand differentiation. Okay, so next one. Okay, so after this, now let's talk about limits. Okay, first subtopic, uh, guys. Make sure you stick with me throughout the lesson. Uh. Kamu kena dengar betul-betul. So, bab ni panjang. It's very long. So, if you lost halfway, then gone already. Okay, 
Pag nga may one, ND. Ah, okay, so first, we talk about limits, ah, guys. Okay, limits. Usually, you will see this. Pag nanampak, symbol ni ta, guys. Have you seen this kind of symbol in maths? At, at maths lah, sorry, yeah. This is limit. Okay, hard in BM, correct. Okay, so how to understand these limits? I want to bring to you a concept you actually learn in your Form 4 Chapter 1 at Maths. Do you all, can you all recall this? Your first chapter you learn in at Maths. Bab pertama, bila kamu belajar matematik ini. There is always, yes, correct, function. Okay, so let us, let me give you an example over here to explain limit. Can you state for me uh, the condition, guys? What can X not equal to? Apa tak boleh sama dengan X nilai kat sini? Huh? Zero, huh? Are you sure, guys? Why zero? Three minus X. Yes, correct. X cannot be three. Okay, jawapan dia tiga. Okay, because if you take three minus three, denominator zero, which means infinity. Okay, guys? So the limit, yes, pembawa cannot be zero. Very good. Okay, so the idea to kuasai this subtopic is you must make sure your pembawa cannot be zero. This is the point I want to highlight over here. Okay? Your denominator for the fraction cannot be zero for this chapter, for this part lah. Yeah, so this is the concept. So basically, x equals to 3 is your limit. Ini adalah hat kamu. You cannot reach 3. Apa-apa nombor lebih kurang dari 2, okay. Lebih pun okay, but 3 cannot. So 3 is something like the idea hat lah, limit. Okay? Uh, yeah, Martin, okay. <laughs> he actually admits tutor, I think, also. So, yeah, it's good. Okay, so, uh, okay, so other than that, let us try some exercises, uh, guys, on these limits. We try to see some question to apply this knowledge. Okay, so let me give you all an example first. Mm, we start easy lah, kita mula dengan yang muda. Okay, let me, let, let's say that the limit of x, hard bagi x, menghampiri kosong. So, can you all tell me the value here, guys, for this function? Untuk fungsi ni? Teacher, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, like me lah, something like that. Okay, negative 2, yes, correct, guys. Okay, the answer is negative 2. Okay, very good. So, this is a simple example. The complex example they can come out in the exam will be something like this. Let me think. Huh? Okay, this one. Ini adalah contoh yang lebih susah untuk selesaikan. Okay, guys. So, can I ask you, this kind of example, contoh macam ni, can I directly sub x is 0 inside the fraction? Boleh tak? Saya terus gantikan x sama dengan kosong. Yes, very good, Mirindra. Use your conjugate cert, guys. That's why I told you earlier, indices cert and log chapter kena kuat. To master differentiation. This is the reason over here. Tengok kamu kena aplikasikan pengetahuan kamu dari bab cert. You need to apply your knowledge on cert to solve this differentiation question. Okay. So what is your conjugate cert over here guys? If you can remind me. Apa cert conjugate? Saya perlu darab kat sini. Yes, very good. 3 plus cert x plus 9. If you are minus at the bottom, I have become plus. Like that only. Bertentangan. Opposite to each other. So make sure you times the same thing up and down. Kena sama. Okay, because whatever we modify to the equation, bila tambah sesuatu perkara baru kata sama, you must make sure that the value that you add is always 1 only. Total. Supaya you don't uh, change the equation. Tak modify persamaan tersebut. Okay, so whatever you times, the value must be 1. And you know that this value is 1 lah. Nilai ni adalah 1. Because same thing up and down. You can cancel off. Okay. So now let us try to solve this together. Okay. This one all on your third chapter. Kamu kena kuat untuk kembangkan yang ni. Okay. So we try to solve this. Huh? 3 minus third x plus 9. 3 plus third x plus 9. Okay. Come. Let's do the expansion. What sama-sama guys do together with me? Okay, 5x times 3, 15x plus 5x third x plus 9 over. Okay, this one is like your quadratic. Pembawa ni kamu kembangkan macam quadratic kamu. You do the expansion exactly like your quadratic only. 
Okay, so uh, you will get 9 plus 3 third x plus 9. I show the full one now, guys, so that you all can see slowly. Saya tunjuk jalan kira penuh. Minus. Okay, this one be careful lah, guys. This one kena letak dalam kurungan. You have to put in a bracket. Remember that. Okay, because this one is minus. Whenever minus, always remember put the bracket there to help you all. Okay, so now we try to simplify further this equation. So you will get, uh, this one cannot change, tak boleh ubah apa-apa. So you can do one thing over here, when to use a square plus b square. a square plus b square is, uh, there is no such thing as a square plus b square. It's either a square minus b square or a square plus 2ab plus b square. There are two formats only. I think you mean a square plus 2ab plus b square. If, if I get what you mean lah. Okay, Mirindra, can you understand? Yeah, yeah, correct. Hmm, okay. Wait, ah. Uh, okay. So now we can actually factorize this. Kamu boleh keluarkan 5x ini. If you realize, you can actually factorize this. Okay? So that later easier lah when we substitute time. And then this one you can permudahkan. Okay, these two cancel. Same term. Ungkapan serupa. Minus x minus 9. So you will get an answer of something like this. But don't stop here uh, guys. Jangan nanti because we want to calculate the limit. Remember that. Ini adalah target kita, our goal to achieve. So can you see over here guys? What can I do over here guys? Apa saya boleh buat kat sini? 5x divide negative x become? What can I change over here guys? Apa saya boleh buat? Guys, what can I do over here? 5x over negative x. Yes, correct. Eh, negative 1 lah. Andy, how you get negative 1? Yeah, yeah, negative 5, correct. Okay, darab semua dengan negative, betul. Okay, so x and x cancel. So 5 over negative 1, you get negative 5, total. So you get something like this. Now you can do your substitution process. Okay, kamu boleh buat penggantian. Yes, correct. Andy answer correct. Negative 30. You substitute x equals 0. Because your limit just now I give you is 0. So you will get negative 5, 3 plus 3, 0 plus 9. So equal negative 30. Okay, guys, this is all about limits you all need to know. This is the hardest example, Adi. Contoh paling susah for idea of limits. Can you understand, guys? First part, first checkpoint this one. Okay or not? Before we go the next part. Okay, good. So we try two examples, Adi, on here. So next part is about first principles. Okay. Have you all heard of this? First principles? I think this is a favorite question they like to ask also. Okay, so you all must understand first principle is actually, yeah, it's long. It's actually similar to first derivative. Pembezaan peringkat pertama tu adalah sama dengan perkara ni. Okay, first principle. Exactly the same thing. You will get the same answer. Kamu akan dapat... Jalan kira sama. But the only thing, this one is longer. This is the shortcut method. But how you understand first derivative, all the knowledge come from here. First principle. How you do the first derivative, the shortcut. Shortcut method is invented from this long cut method. Like longer method. Long cut method pula. <laughs> Sorry. Longer method. Okay. So... Uh, let me tell you one formula over here that is shown in the textbook. Okay, you all will apply this formula later. Halfway through your working, kamu akan guna formula ni when you show about first principle. Guys, delta means what? Huh? When I say delta, can you all tell me what is the meaning of delta when I write that? Apa maksud delta tu? This is the formula actually. Yes, perubahan kecil, Andy. Add the word kecil. It's a small change or approximate change. This is why we use the symbol delta. Banyak guna dalam bab ni, this delta sign. 
Okay, so you can see over here, this means the small change of x approaches zero. Perubahan kecil dalam x menghampiri sifar. This is to show the meaning lah. And then this is the formula that uh, you will apply later on. Bila kamu buat uh, first principle ni, uh, principle pertama, kamu akan guna formula ni. You will find out later in the example I show you. Okay. So, can you accept this guys? Boleh terima sampai sekarang? You should get the same answer. This is what you all should remember. First principle is something similar to first derivative. Okay. So, let me give you all an example to try on this first principle thing. Principle tama. So, let's say I have an equation. Mm, kita bagi quadratic lah. We give a quadratic equation over here. And they ask you to find dy over dx. Guna principle tama. By using first principle lah guys. So, cannot direct write the answer. Okay. So, you must show working over here. So, can I ask you guys, if you do directly, what is the answer you get over here, guys? Apa jawapan kamu dapat untuk yang ni? This is to test your differentiation basic. Yes, 4x minus 3. Very good. All of this, guys, differentiation basic, I assume you all have already. Huh? Kamu kena ada asas because the whole chapter got other, other concept that you all must know. So, this differentiation basic is a must to know. Or else you cannot do this chapter. Tak boleh buat. Kalau tak tahu bezakan, you are gone. That's it. So you must know. Always differentiation, always remember. Don't get confused because you have another chapter after this called integration, pengamiran. So differentiation, we always do times and minus. Integration is plus and divide. Okay, you must remember this. Kena ingat. Operasi dua-dua uh, bab ni. Okay, so this is the difference over here. So what I mean by plus and divide, you... Times the power, kamu, wait, huh? kamu kena darab kuasa ini, times this two, you will get 4, and then you minus the power by 1, you get 4x. Dato, darab, tambah, tambah, okay, good method, Andy, correct? <laughs> okay, so guys, if you want to refer, acronym can refer to Andy lah for this one. For differentiation, guna dato. Senang nak ingat guys. Differentiation, start with the letter D. Dato, start with the letter D also. Okay, DD. Okay, so differentiation, dato. Ah, yeah, so integration will be the other one, taba. Okay, so you just remember for differentiation only, times minus. Because sometimes you guys might have a tendency to switch. Something. Ah, Marilyn. Wait, uh, okay, sorry. Uh. Okay, so uh, okay, let me let us solve this question using the first principle. So I want to tell you guys there are three important steps. Tiga langkah penting bila buat pembezaan menggunakan peringkat pertama. When you use uh, first principle, first step always add delta x to x. Or delta y to y. Kamu tambah delta x kepada x atau delta y kepada y. First step. Okay, this is the step to remember. Second step. Second step is you use simultaneous. Specifically elimination method. Kamu kena guna kaedah persamaan serentak. Kaedah penghapusan. When you solve this uh, first uh, principle. Because you will have two separate equations over here. Kamu akan ada dua persamaan. So definitely when you have two unknown, dua uh, pemboli ubah tak tahu, definitely you must use simultaneous lah. Okay. And then third one, you must divide delta x. Okay. Kena bahagi dengan delta x. Third step. Fourth step, the limit, hard dia, Delta X approaching to zero. Menghampiri sifar. Perubahan kecil bagi X. Okay guys, are you clear on these four steps? Jelas tak? About the four step to do this uh, first principle thing. This is important because in the exam, mereka takkan bagi yang ni. You have to remember how to do this one. Okay guys, clear or not? Try to respond to me. Do you understand this four step? Okay, so we try an example. I use the example I gave on top. 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Let us see. Huh? 
usually they will give quadratic equation because kalau mereka bagi persamaan cubic, a cubic equation will be quite long, actually very long to do this step because power 3 kamu kena kembangkan kuasa 3 which actually you guys haven't learned yet. Kamu tak pernah belajar lagi how to expand a power 3 yet. So most likely they shouldn't give you that lah. Okay, so I just do this one first so that no need to confuse you all. Okay, so first step guys, can you remind me? First step, what do we do for first principle? Apa langkah pertama kita? Yes, very good, yes. Plus delta y, also plus delta x. Okay, it will come long, guys. Dia akan jadi panjang, but don't get scared when it comes like this. It is a normal equation only. Persamaan biasa sahaja. Okay, so after this, you can expand. Buat pengembangan macam biasa. Okay, this one, you all should know how to expand. This is a normal quadratic expansion. Okay, pengembangan biasa quadratic. So you should get x square plus 2x delta x plus delta x square. Okay, guys, anyone confused uh, how to find this one? Do you guys struggle how to get this one? Anyone? Siapa-siapa rasa struggle nak kembangkan yang ni? Can you all tell? Or all okay? Okay or not, guys? This one. Because this one a bit complex. That's why I asked this question. Okay, yeah? Uh? Oh, you don't understand. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Kalau kamu tak faham, you can actually separate this one. Boleh pisahkan. Kamu buat dua bracket saja, dua kurungan. To make you all easier to understand. Like this. Okay? Then I proceed with the working. Ah, This one kamu boleh buat pengembangan macam biasa. Darab masuk negatif tiga sahaja. Just times in the negative three into the bracket. Yeah, yeah. Of course, like Andy, we have to kembangkan. Then how to solve? Kena buat pengembangan baru boleh selesaikan. Okay, so how we kembang this one, guys? Quadratic knowledge. X square. This one go first. This one go here. Plus X delta X. Plus this one go here. X delta X. Plus this one go here. Delta X square. So now do you understand, guys? How I got just now that one? Boleh faham tak sekarang? Now it uh, becomes similar already. Okay, then minus 3X. Minus 3 delta x plus 2. Okay, after that, you just try to simplify a bit. Buat uh, ringkaskan ungkapan ini. So, you'll get y plus delta y is 2. x square plus 2x delta x plus delta x square. Close bracket, minus 3x. Just copy back, guys. Because you cannot solve anything over here. Tak boleh selesaikan apa-apa. Okay, so after this, you times the 2 inside. Darab masuk 2, 2 juga. So you'll get 2x square plus 4x delta x plus 2 delta x square minus 3x minus 3 delta x plus 2. Okay, uh, guys, until here. Can you understand what I'm doing right now? Boleh faham tak? Okay, although it looks confusing, I hope you all understand lah. Okay, so now guys, if I zoom out a bit, can you see the picture over here? Cuba fokus mata kat persamaan pertama dan kedua kamu. Try to focus your eye out there. Huh? Let me use a different color. Look at this and look at this. Apa ungkapan yang saya boleh hapuskan kat sini? Can you all type out for me? What are the expression I can eliminate over here from these two equations? First, it's just the power 2, the x, then you can time 2 using the square. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. That's another method for quadratic fast speed. Okay. So what, guys, what can I eliminate over here? Apa ungkapan saya boleh hapuskan kat sini? Can you all type out for me? Which one? Yes, correct. Basically, the whole equation lah. Kamu boleh hapuskan yang nombor satu ini. Semua ungkapan kat sini, you can eliminate. Let's say this is equation 1. And let's say this is equation 2. So, kamu akan tulis 2 minus 1. 2 tolak 1. Okay, over here you write 2 minus 1. So, what do you get guys? You will get delta y 
y already hapus. This one also hapus already equals 4x delta x. A tip for you, mana mana yang ada delta x tu takkan hapus. The one that has delta x won't be eliminated because the top equation don't have that one. 3x hapus minus 3 delta x to hapus. Okay, guys, can you understand how I get this equation now over here? Okay, so what's the next step, guys? Try to remind me. Apa kita kena buat lepas ni? Yes, divide delta x. Very good. Because we want to eliminate delta x. 4x delta x plus 2 delta x square minus 3 delta x over delta x. Okay, so after you do this, you can actually simplify the equation. Kamu boleh permudahkan dah. So delta y over delta x equal this two cut become 4x. Power you can cut, boleh potong, become 2 delta x. This two also cut. So become minus 3. Okay, so next step guys, what to do? Apa langkah seterusnya kita? What do I write now? Now already very close to the answer. Sangat dekat dah. What to write, guys? Yes, very good. Make sure you write in this format. Huh? Lim delta y over delta x. And then you put here delta x approach 0. Okay, this is the format. Kena tulis macam ni. Okay, so it's equal to 4x plus you just substitute. Buat penggantian macam ni. So therefore, your dy over dx, kesimpulan dia, is equal to 4x minus 3. Is there any tips to write delta in a different... Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, 8 actually will sambung on the top here, Mirindra. But delta, you don't have that one. Delta is just stop like an S. Okay, this is how you write delta. If 8, it will join. Become like this. This part, none for delta. Ah, uh, Okay, so that's the difference. Lah. Okay. So, okay guys, can you see uh, now your original equation and uh, per, yang, yang telah melalui pembezaan peringkat pertama. Can you see now? Is it correct or not? You try to check and see. 4x minus 3, 4x minus 3. Same answer. Maksudnya betul lah. Prinsip pertama kamu. It is correct. Okay guys, can you understand? First principle, we covered this already. Second part done. Okay, not guys, before we go to the next part. Yeah, that's why you must remember the four step. Always remember the four step guy in the exam. Semua empat langkah tadi, this one. Where was it? I think it was over this page. This is the four step over here. Okay. This one is your life savior for this chapter. So every delta x is zero. Yes, everything. No matter what type of equation. Tak kira persamaan apa kamu dapat, delta x lalu menghampiri kosong. You must make that assumption. Okay? So next, we go to the pembezaan peringkat pertama subtopik. Okay, so let me put a new page. Insert page. Okay. So let us talk about first derivatives, now, guys. Pembezaan peringkat pertama. First derivatives. Okay, guys. So first of all, the symbol we use to show first derivatives is dy over dx. By the way, this exam paper have the first. Need to memorize and the formula tak diberi, ya, guys. This one. So kena hafal the steps. This one definitely they won't give. 100%. Okay, so this one you must understand is dy over dx. So what does dy over dx actually mean, guys? Kamu kena faham yang ni. dy over dx actually means differentiate y, bezakan y with respect to x, terhadap x. Okay, you must understand this. Because later in the subtopic rate of change of related quantities, kadar perubahan quantity berhubung kait, you will realize that we don't use dy over dx already. Kita guna simbol-simbol berlainan. We use different symbol. So the concept actually come from here. You must understand this. Okay, differentiate y with respect to x. Okay, so how if I ask you guys, d2y over dx2, 
Can you tell me what does this mean in words? Can you all type out dalam perkataan? What does D2Y over DX2 mean? If you understand, yes, differentiate uh, twice with respect to? Respect to what? Yes, with respect to X squared this time. Very good, correct. Okay, betul, with respect to X squared. So this is how you understand this one. Okay, so don't do the silly mistake, huh, guys. Jangan buat kesilapan cuai ni. This is not the symbol to show second derivative. Huh? Not dy over dx square. These two not equal, remember. Kesilapan lazim. Okay, don't write dy over dx square to show two times differentiation. The symbol is like this. Okay, make sure you all don't make the mistake. Okay, and you also you must make sure you don't write dy square over dx2. This one also wrong. Okay, it must be d square y over dx square. Sebab kalau kamu tulis simbol salah, most likely you might lose mark. Kamu akan hilang marka because it means a different thing already. Atau tak membawa makna also. Okay, so just be careful with this lah. So other than that, first derivative. Uh, okay, let us try one example. Guys, have you heard of this? Uh, chain wool, petua wantai. Yes or no? Okay, so let us apply this to one question when we do first derivative. Okay, so let me think uh, of an equation. Okay, y equals to... Oh yeah, one more thing, guys. Let's say uh, they give you fx. Uh, how do I write the first derivative? Yes, phew, so fast, f prime x, correct. Okay, this is to show first derivative, f prime. And also don't, and also try to differentiate, uh, guys, kamu kena tahu bezakan yang ni dengan yang ni. You must know the difference. This one is inverse function, fungsi song sang. This is first derivative, pembezaan peringkat pertama. Different, uh, guys. You must make sure not confused between these two signs. First one is a symbol pelengkap, prime. The other one is kuasa negative satu, power negative one. So this is the difference over here. So don't get confused with these parts. Okay? So let us try an example on this part first. So let's say I got a polynomial equation. Usually in differentiation, mereka akan bagi persamaan polynomial kat kamu. Polynomial equation simply means, if you want me to explain this, polynomial equation. Poly means what, guys? If you study English before, poly means what? I explained to you guys now. We analyze the word. Poly means what? Kamu belajar fizik, kimia, bio kan? What is the meaning of poly? Bila nampak perkataan poly. Yes, another word for it. Complex is around there, but what is the exact word? Yes, I'm not. Many. Correct. Okay, we analyze the word. Huh? Many. What does normal mean, guys? Normal. Apa maksud normal tu? Actually, BM also called polynomial, right, Andy? Uh, okay, another word, Samna. Actually, can lah, you can say like this many power of. Okay, means it's like a complex equation lah. Okay, normal actually means terms actually, ungkapan. Okay, so many terms, polynomial. That is why your equation is complex. Okay, from the word itself. Okay, so this is how we understand polynomial equation lah, just to the English method. So now let's say I give you all an example. You all try to do this, huh? the differentiation, and see what you all get. 3x plus 5 power negative 3. Okay, guys, can you all type out your final answer? Jawapan akhir. For f prime x. Jangan tersilap tulis dy over dx, huh, guys. You cannot write dy over dx over here because this is fx. So when you differentiate, you must write f prime. Jangan tulis dy bagi dx. So tell me what you get. Negative 5, 3x plus 5, 3. Eh, wait, huh? 3x plus 5. Uh, Andy, this one is power negative 3, huh? Negative 6, 3x plus 5. Others, guys, line, line. 
what do you guys get after differentiating? Remember, uh, this is chain rule. So you must understand. Okay, let me check and see. Negative 6, 3x plus 5. Okay, Kwasa correct? Yes, Mirindra answer correct. Okay, guys? Mirindra answer correct. Refer to Mirindra answer. Okay, guys? So be careful uh, when you do this. Okay, first step, differentiation macam biasa. Langkah pertama tu biasa. Power times the number in the front. You get negative 6. Okay, and then differentiation say power kena tolak satu. Power minus 1 become minus 4. Okay, and then guys, don't forget, huh? this is where a lot of people forget in the SPM. Okay, kesilapan lazim. Calon lupa bezakan kandungan dalam bracket. They forget to differentiate the bracket content. Remember in differentiation, every term must have its contribution. Okay, setiap ungkapan kena bagi sumbangan kepada proses pembezaan. Okay, means 3x plus 5, you also have to differentiate. Kena bezakan. So, you will get 3. Eh, wait. Huh? Mirindra, negative 18. Sorry, I think I times wrongly. Yeah, yeah, it should be negative 18. Okay, yeah, this should be the answer. Okay, ini adalah jawapan kamu. Okay, so don't make careless lah when you do this one. So, always remember this part, don't forget. Whenever you have polynomial equation. Okay, so... Other than this, kamu boleh tulis jawapan dalam satu lagi bentuk juga. Let's say you don't like a negative power. Kamu tak suka letak kuasa negatif kat situ. You can bring down the whole thing to become a positive power. Law of indices, guys. Index law. Hukum index state that you can do like this. Okay, so you can leave your answer over here. If you leave your answer over here, kalau kamu tinggal jawapan kat sini, also accepted. No worries. Okay, so are you clear, guys, with this chain rule? Boleh faham petua lantai ni? This is a good example for chain rule. Okay, so this is one part. And then let me talk about uh, what else to tell in this part. Okay, let us talk about some equations over here. I want to show you all the relationship in this differentiation part. I want to really make you understand what is the meaning of dy over dx. Kamu kena betul-betul faham perkataan dy bagi dx tu. Okay, guys. First part. What do you get for dy over dx, guys? Can you tell me? Apa nilai kamu for dy over dx? Very good. Zero. Ingat, guys, whenever you differentiate a constant, the first derivative equal to zero. Pembezaan peringkat pertama tu nilai dia kosong. Okay. Second example. Can you tell me, guys? dy over dx, what do you all get? Yes, 3. Very good. Okay, so try to see the pattern now, guys. Cuba tengok pola dia. Third part, what do you guys get? dy over dx. Yes, very good. 6x plus 5. Okay, so now I want to show you all something. What does dy over dx actually mean in all these three situations? I make a conclusion for you guys. Okay, guys, can I ask you? Look at here first, huh? kat tengah-tengah. Can you tell me what is the gradient for this line? Apa kecerunan? Uh, persamaan ini. Yes, correct. And do you notice that your dy over dx is also 3 over here? So can I say that dy over dx actually equal to gradient? Is this correct, guys? Yes or no? Yes, correct. Okay, so this is actually the meaning of dy over dx. Itu menunjukkan kecerunan. Okay, it shows the gradient. And you can also understand it from here. Y equals 5. Horizontal or vertical line, guys? This one. Y sama dengan 5 tu garis menegak ke melintang? Horizontal. Very good. Horizontal line, what's the gradient, guys? Apa kecerunan? Yes, very good. Zero. So it makes sense. Dy over dx is zero over here. This one a bit difficult lah. Because quadratic is a curve. Bila kamu ada lengkung, how to find gradient, guys? Can you tell me ya? Curve, how to find gradient? Macam mana nak cari kecerunan guna lengkung? Yes, Mirindra, tangent. Very good. Tangent. Tangent menyentuh satu titik sahaja dalam lengkung. It just touch one point on the curve. So basically, untuk satu lengkung secara am, kita tak boleh definisikan kecerunan dia. We cannot define a gradient for a curve, for the whole curve. Tapi pada sesuatu titik spesifik, at a specific point on the curve, we can find the gradient. 
Okay, remember that, uh, guys. Only specific point. Satu lengkong like that, we cannot find the gradient because you can see over here. Is this an exact value, guys? Adakah ini nilai tetap for the kecerunan? Yes or no? Is this an exact value? No. Why? Because you have an X term over here. Kamu tak tahu nilai dia. Which means that kamu kena gantikan sesuatu coordinate X ke dalam ungkapan tu. You have to substitute an X coordinate into that equation to find the exact value of gradient. So this is the difference from this compared to this one and also this one. Perbezaan dia. You can see over here now. Okay. And also another thing I want to highlight to you guys. What is the keyword you all must look for dy over dx? Kadang-kadang soalan akan bagi tahu keyword macam ni. Tangent. Tangent means dy over dx. Okay, guys? Another keyword, if you all see before. Gradient function. Yang ni sangat penting, guys. Very important. Fungsi kecerunan. Now you know why dy over dx actually show gradient? It is called the gradient function. Okay? Dia panggil dia fungsi kecerunan. dy over dx tu. So whenever you see gradient function in the question, straight away write out dy over dx. Okay, guys? Can you get it so far? These are the two keywords to look out for when you talk about differentiation. These two things must appear in your mind. Okay, so let's talk about the next part. Other than this, we've covered already. Chain rule, we done. Okay, now let's talk about the product rule and quotient rule. Ah, yang ni pun kena hafal. This one also have to memorize, ah, guys. Product rule and quotient rule. Okay, let me add some more. Today, the briefing quite long, ah, guys. Sedikit panjang because a lot to cover, actually. Okay, so let us talk about product rule and quotient rule. I will show you the difference in one slide. Satu slide saja saya guna. Okay, guys, so one tip for you. Ah, macam mana nak ingat formula? Just one tip for you, guys. Product means what, guys? What operation? Operasi apa bila nampak product? Plus, minus, times or divide? Yes, very good, times. How about quotient, guys? English, quotient means what? Plus, minus, times or divide? Quotient, quotient. Yes, very good, divide. So how to memorize the formula, kamu boleh nampak. Okay, so for product rule, this is the formula. Ini adalah formula bagi petua hasil darab. Can you see guys over here? Both of these is times actually. That is why it is called the product rule. Sebab dia guna operasi darab. And if you see and check the formula for quotient rule, you will notice there will be a divide sign over there. Kamu akan nampak simbol bahagi. Can you see guys? There is a divide sign over there. So this is why this formula is under quotient rule. Okay guys, are you clear on this? The difference? Perbezaan dua-dua formula ni? This one not given lah guys in the exam. I think might not be given lah. Mungkin takkan diberi. So better memorize. Kena ingat. Because my time, it wasn't given. So I'm not sure about your time. But maybe most likely no so lah. So you have to remember. Formula ni sangat penting bila ada uh, persamaan yang sangat complex. A complex equation like this. Let's say kamu nak bezakan persamaan macam ni. You want to differentiate this kind of equation guys. So this formula come in handy a lot. Okay, formula ni sangat berguna. Okay, so I want to show you all two different conditions over here. Dua situasi berlainan. Because sometimes you all might ask, right? When to use product rule? When to use quotient rule? Do you guys have this question in your mind? Like, are you confused? Bila nak guna petua darab? Bila nak guna petua bahagi? Yes, okay. My answer for you is, jawapan saya, is up to you actually. There is no right, right or wrong over here. Kamu boleh guna dua-dua pun for any type of equation. It is just that which is more easy to do. Manakah yang lebih senang? You can use both for any type of equation. But my advice, whenever you see the relationship here is times, bila hubungan dia darab, gunalah petua darab. Use the product rule. But whenever you see a divide over here, bila nampak sahaja apa simbol bahagi, straight away use quotient rule. Guna petua bahagi. You can say 
I can shift this power on top become negative too, right? Yes, kamu boleh pindahkan ungkapan tu ke atas jadi kuasa negatif. Then use product goal. Boleh. Not wrong. Also can. Okay guys, can you understand ah, this concept? It's free. Up to you to choose. Because both method uh, should give you the same answer. Dua-dua pun kena bagi jawapan sama. Okay guys, are you clear on this? Jelas? This is about the product rule and question rule. Okay, so we go next part. Uh, next part is about second derivative, pembezaan peringkat kedua. Okay. I feel like today going to be a lot of theory only because I need to explain this to you guys so that you all really understand. Kalau saya terus pergi latihan, if I go directly to exercise, I scared some of you all blur over there because... Maybe you forget a bit already on this chapter. Terlalu sikit. Okay, so let us talk about second derivative, huh, guys. So the symbol is d2y over dx2. Okay, symbol for second derivative. Okay, so uh, as just now I said already, this means differentiate y2 times with respect to x square. Kamu bezakan y2 dua kali uh, terhadap x square. Okay, so the, what is the importance of the second derivative? Can you tell guys, what, when do we use the second derivative mostly? Bila kita guna dia? The most important time. When do we use this guys? Yes, very good, yes. To find max or minimum point. Correct. Guna, guna yang ni untuk cari titik minimum atau titik maximum. Okay, basically... You're going to determine this from a stationary point. Okay? Dari titik pegun, kamu akan tentukan. Titik ni sama ada dia minimum atau maximum. Okay? You will have a stationary point. Usually, you will have two stationary point in the question. Kamu akan dapat jawapan dua titik pegun. Because you will have a quadratic function. As you guys know very well, quadratic function usually will give you two x value, right? Kamu akan dapat dua nilai x dari Uh, penyelesaian fungsi kuadratik. Maksudnya kamu akan ada dua nilai y juga. You will have two separate y value. So this is why you have two stationary point. Okay? So this is the concept. So from these two point, satu akan jadi maximum, satu akan jadi minimum. One of it will be max point, one of it will be min point. So how to identify whether it's max point or min point? I got a very good example for you. Just look at the quadratic curve. Kamu dah kenal kan? Dua bentuk kuadratik ini. So, can I ask you guys, first situation, is A less than or greater than zero? Adakah nilai A lebih besar atau lebih kecil daripada kosong? Yes, very good, greater. This is why the graph is smiling. So, this is a tip for you guys to remember. Your d2y over dx2 should also be greater than zero if this is the minimum point. Kalau ini titik minimum, yang ni pun lebih besar dari kosong. So always remember, kalau kamu confused, titik minimum tu lebih kecil atau lebih besar dari kosong. Think of this. A greater than zero means this one greater than zero. This the tip. Yang ni terbalik lah, opposite. This one you will have a maximum point, titik maximum. Okay, so d2y over dx2 lebih kecil dari kosong. Okay guys, can you understand this? Boleh faham? Can you understand now, guys? Up till here, okay? Before I proceed, okay, good. So let me talk a bit about stationary points also, huh? just to give you all some knowledge on this. Okay, so this point, there's many terms actually they can use. Mereka boleh guna banyak ungkapan to show the stationary point. Okay, stationary point is one of it. They can also call it turning point. Okay? Yang ni titik pegun, stationary point. Uh, Andy, do you know turning point in BM is what? Ah? Titik apa? I'm not really familiar with the term. Or is it still called titik pegun? Ah, titik pusingan, okay? Titik pusingan. Correct. Okay. So another point, another one actually they have actually, but not really uh, commonly seen. If you see this, uh, guys, this also mean the same thing. Uh, point of inflection. 
I think you all never heard of this, but it also means the same meaning. Just sharing is caring lah for you guys. Okay. Point of inflection. They mean the same thing. Okay. So why they call it turning point? Ah, this is an important part. Guys, turning point. Turning point is a point where something changes, right? If I tell in English, this moment was the turning point of my life. Do you understand the sentence, guys? Boleh faham tak ayat ni? This is the turning point in my life. What does this mean? Means something changed, right? Sesuatu berubah. Same like the graph over here. Let me show you. Why is it the turning point? This is a turning point, guys. Ini adalah titik pusingan. Why? Because from like this, the graph tukar bentuk become like this. So this is why we call it as a turning point. Ini adalah cara betul untuk faham. Okay, this is the way to understand. Can you get it, guys? Boleh faham poin saya tak? Why we call this turning point? Because ini adalah titik di mana graf berubah dari sini ke sini. It changes shape already. Okay? So if I ask you, if you really understand ah, the meaning of turning point, let me ask you a question. Saya tanya soalan. Let's say ah, I got a graph like this. X and Y. What type of graph is this guy? What, what type of graph is this guy? Jenis apa ni? What kind of graph is this? So a midpoint is a turning point. Uh, midpoint of what? Oh, you mean the quadratic. Doesn't mean usually. Doesn't mean. Yes, correct, Zerchi. Linear. Okay, this is a linear graph. So can I ask you guys, does this graph have turning point or not? Adakah graph ni mempunyai titik pusingan? Based on what I explained on the quadratic just now. Does the shape of this graph change, guys? Yes, very good. No. Means no turning point. Very good. And I can prove it to you guys also. Saya boleh buktikan. This is in the form of y equals mx plus c. Katakanlah, I give an equation for this. I just simply put 3x plus 5. dy over dx, what do you get guys for this? Apa nilai untuk dy dx ni? What is the value you get? Yes, 3. And turning point, what is the assumption we make guys? Apa anggapan kita buat bila cari titik pusingan ini? What is the assumption? Yes, dy over dx sama dengan kosong. Can you see, uh, guys, these two actually con contradict each other. They are berlawanan. So that is why linear graph don't have turning point. Do you understand, guys? Fungsi linear tak akan ada titik pusingan because of these two things over here. It is contradict, not equal. Okay? So if I give you one more example, satu lagi jenis graph for you all. Try to identify the turning point for me. This I really want to make you understand lah, the meaning of turning point. Okay, guys, what type of graph is this? Apa fungsi ni? Huh? No, 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 not reciprocal. Let me draw again. Huh? Wait now, guys, I draw again for you all. I'm sure you all seen this kind of graph before. What graph is this? Yes, cubic, fungsi cubic. This is actually x power 3, guys. Okay, fungsi cubic, nilai x dia, kuasa dia tiga. Yes, yes, it's not tested in your syllabus, but they can give a function for x power 3. Make up boleh bagi. Because if you realize, right guys, when you do dy over dx for this function, kamu akan dapat x kuasa 2. Dan kamu pernah belajar cara nak selesaikan fungsi kuadratik. You have learned how to solve a quadratic equation. Means the original equation, sebelum melalui proses pembezaan, they can actually give you up till power 3. Power 4 kamu tak akan jumpa dalam SPM. Sebab bila kamu bezakan power 4, you will get power 3. Power 3 kamu tak tahu macam mana nak selesaikan. Okay, you all never learn to solve cubic equation yet. So x power 3, this is the limit untuk syllabus always. Okay, so can I ask you guys, how many turning point we have over here? Berapa titik pusingan kamu boleh kenal pasti kat sini? If you recall and see. Others? Yang lain? Try to see the shape of the graph, guys. The shape is the key. Yes, very good. Mimindra, Jesh, 2. If you realize, uh, guys, quadratic equation, if I let it equal to 0, how many possible answer I have, guys? Kalau fungsi quadratic saya samakan dengan kosong. Because dy over dx must be 0, right? Bila nak cari titik peguntu. Yes, you have two possibility. Okay, you have x1 and also x2. 
So definitely, perlu ada dua titik pusingan. There must be two turning points. So if you see closely yeah, on the graph, you can actually see it. This is one point where the graph changed shape from uh, decreasing kepada like something flat. Okay, And this is another turning point where the graph actually shoot up before the graph shoot up. Okay, guys, can you understand? These two are the turning point for cubic. Boleh faham tak? Okay, there are two turning points over here based on the shape of the graph. Okay, so we go next part. Huh? All clear up till now? Semua jelas? Before I talk about the relationship of tangent, normal and uh, what more? Curve. Okay, uh, guys, try to comment to me. Are you all okay or not? Before I go next part. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm, okay. So come. We talk about relationship of tangent, curve and normal. Okay, this one uh, guys, very important. I emphasize now. Yang ni sangat penting. Because question love to test on this part. Really love one, the question. They like to ask on this. If come out differentiation, high chance this part will be tested. Sangat tinggi. Okay, so you all must understand really. So how to understand, macam mana nak faham, you understand from the graph again. Cuba faham dari graph yang saya lukis. Okay, so let's say I got axis like this, x and y. I give you simple example lah guys, quadratic, very common. Okay, so let's say I got a tangent line over here. Okay, guys, recall, huh? meaning of tangent means touch at one point only. So let's say my tangent line, I choose it to come over here like this. Okay, guys, are you clear on this? This is the tangent line. This one is tangent. This one is curve. So normal line, guys, normal line means what? Apa definisi bagi garis normal? Yes, very good. That is the formula. Very good, Jachi. Perpendicular to tangent, okay? So this actually come from the knowledge of your coordinate geometry, that formula. M1 times M2 is negative 1. Ilmu dia datang dari situ. So you must draw a normal. The point is here. Let's say the point is this one lah. So the normal, you will draw like this. Ini adalah garis normal kamu. 90 degree. Okay, so this is basically the relationship between curve normal and tangent. Lengkung, garis tangent dan garis normal. So how to apply this is basically you have a quadratic function. Let's say lah, fungsi quadratic saya macam ni. Saya bagi contoh kat kamu. So how to find the tangent guys? Tangent mean dy over dx. I told you guys just now, that is the keyword. Okay, kalau nampak saja tangent, straight away buat pembezaan peringkat pertama. You should get 6x minus 2. So let's say lah, you must have the info, guys. Coordinate ni, kamu perlu ada info dia. Okay, sorry. You must have the info on this coordinate kalau kamu nak cari nilai dy over dx. Okay, if you want to calculate the gradient at this point, you must have the x coordinate for that point lah. Perlu ada. So let's say I give you uh, the point is actually 1, 5. Okay, so then what will you guys do? Kamu akan gantikan x sama dengan 1. Inside this differentiation equation, like this. So you will get dy over dx is 4. Okay, so what does dy over dx means, equal 4 means, guys? Apa maksud dia? Maksudnya, kecerunan garis tangent pada titik specific A2 adalah sama dengan 4. The gradient of tangent exactly at that point A is 4. The value. Means quite steep lah. Nilai 4 agak besar. Means it's quite cerun lah. Very steep. Okay, so can I ask you guys, if the gradient of tangent is 4, what is the gradient of normal, guys? Apa nilai dia? Based on the theory just now. Uh, Zachi, I think you careless a bit. Yeah, negative 1 over 4, okay? So easy tip, guys. If you want to song sang this one, huh, you just see here. Positive 4 and negative, okay? If this is 4, become 1 over 4. So this is a fast method. You don't have, you have positive, I give you negative. If you are 4, you become 1 over 4. Like that only. 
Okay, so this is how you count normal very fast. Okay, but better show the formula lah. Kalau nak tunjuk jalan kiwa betul-betul, you just write out the formula so that the examiner know what you're doing. Okay, so after this, question suka tanya. Find the equation of normal. Cuba cari persamaan normal. Okay, so this part, another formula will use. Okay, satu lagi formula. So whenever you want to form equation, guys, what are the two info you all need? Apa dua info mesti ada bila nak cari persamaan? Can you give me the two info? What do we all need? Yes, gradient and coordinate. Correct. Okay, kamu perlu ada info tentang kecerunan dan juga salah satu koordinat untuk gantikan dalam persamaan. You must have at least one coordinate to sub. So as we saw just now, we already have the info A is 1, 5. And we also have the gradient is negative 1 over 4. So can lah, kita boleh bentuk persamaan normal kat sini. Okay, we can form the equation already. So guys, when you form, want to form equation of straight line, what are the equation that come to your mind? Formula apa datang pada minda kamu? Nak guna apa? Got two possibility over here. You can use two type of formula over here to form the straight line. Okay, you all prefer that one? First one, y minus y1 equals mx minus mx1. Or, like what Mimindra say, also can, y equals mx plus c. Yang ni datang dari mathematic modern kamu. Okay, the basic formula. So don't worry, yeah, guys. Modern maths formula can use in N maths. Boleh guna. So don't worry. Only N maths formula tak boleh guna dalam modern maths. This is the concept we apply. Okay? So you can use either one. Both also can. Okay? So you can find out lah your equation already. So this is basically the summary on all about the normal curve and tangent. Okay, guys? So are you clear on this part? Boleh faham? For the relationship? Okay, so we go next one. This one very long chapter, guys. So actually, it takes time. Although I try to do fast, but still need time. Okay, so let us talk about something here. This is also a good thing to explain, actually. I want to test you all on the concept of dy over dx here. Okay, guys, so let us say uh, I have a weird shape over here. Saya ada satu bentuk pelik macam ni. Okay, guys, this is how it can make you, this diagram can make you understand differentiation. A simple picture speaks a thousand words. Okay, so first point I identify is over here. Second point I identify is here. And this is the third point. Okay, so now I ask, uh, first point, guys, dy over dx equals to what? Apa nilai dy bagi dx kalau saya nak cari coordinate 2? Yes, very good. Equal to 0. How about d2y over dx2, guys? What is the value? Apa nilai dia? Recall back just now what I said. What is the value over here? Yes, very good. Less than... Uh, Mirinda, that one you were earlier type. Uh. Okay, this one less than zero, uh, guys. For the, yeah, correct. Less than zero, correct. Okay, so this one, guys, I think this one you all will know. Lah. Dy over dx is zero, definitely. Because horizontal line, kecerunan dia kosong. Okay, so for this one, uh, I want to ask you. Is there d2y over dx2, uh, guys? Untuk bahagian yang ni. Adakah Ada ungkapan macam ni? No, very good. Because horizontal line don't have a maximum or minimum point. Tak ada titik minimum or maximum. So definitely, you won't have d2y over dx2 lah. Okay, so can I ask you this one? d2y over dx2 less than or greater? Yang mana satu? Yes, greater. Because it's a smiling shape. Okay, so one diagram summarize everything for you already. Satu raja saja. So everything you need to know is here for this part. Okay, so next part, let me see. Next part, I think we are coming to uh, the rate of change already. We are entering rate of change now. Let me see. Uh. Mm. Okay, let us talk about rate of change. Another interesting topic. Satu lagi topic yang agak 
uh, Manavik, rate of change of related quantities. Then we will go to small changes, then Kautim lah, finish already, the chapter. Rate of change of related quantities. Okay, guys, so how to understand this? Huh? Macam mana nak faham? First of all, you must understand the word rate of change. So whenever I talk about rate, what does it mean, guys? Kadal. What quantity am I referring to? Very good time. This one will always use in this chapter one, always. Divided by time. Bahagi masa. Hello, Niveda. <laughs> Where's the problem, child? <laughs> okay, per second. Okay, yeah, dy over dt or anything you like. Okay. So it's divided by time. So let's say I want to test y'all on a few quantity lah. This one you need important lah guys. Bila kamu masuk subtopic ni, you need to kena betul. Because when you write your final answer, they not only check your value, they check your unit also. So you must be clever how to write the unit. So let us say, I give you luas bahagi dengan masa. DA over DT. Can you all tell me, apa unit dia? <laughs> How you know? Huh? Okay, what's the unit, guys, for this? Apa unit untuk yang ni? Yes, very good. Cm square, S power, negative 1. This one, if you all know physics, this one very easy for you guys. Kamu kena hanya tengok unit yang atas bahagi dengan yang bawah. Okay, so let me give you another example. Let us say I take dA bahagi dengan dL. L represent length, guys. L to mewakili jarak. So what is the unit here? Apa unit kat sini? Saya kena tulis. Yes, correct. CM. Doesn't mean always they will ask you for second, guys. Not always. Bukan selalu. So they can also relate between quantities like this. They don't have time. Okay, perubahan luas berpandukan pada perubahan uh, jarak. Okay, so this is a few example lah you guys must know. So again over here, satu lagi uh, peringatan, you all must know the chain rule. Because rate of change of related quantity apply this again. Pertua lantai. Okay, so example I can give you. dy over dx equal to dy over du times du over dx. This is the formula, guys, untuk pertua lantai, chain rule. Means over here, you are actually involving t three quantities. Kamu melibatkan perubahan tiga quantity kat sini. The y, the u, and also the x. So this is how you form chain rule. Okay, guys? So until here, clear. Sampai sini. Before I go to some example with you all on this uh, rate of change. Okay, so we let us let me give you a more simple more simple example ever. A cube. So I look at cubus kat sini. Okay, not perfect drawing, uh, guys. I'm not a very good drawer, so hope you understand. Lukisan saya tak sebaik, not the best. Okay. So let let's say that all the length of the side of the cube is x. Okay. So more cc cubus to x. Correct lah, because cube must have same length, right, guys? Okay. So can you tell me? What is the volume for this? Apa nilai isi padu untuk yang ni? Yes, very good. X cube. Okay, so let me think. Huh? Okay, can you all tell me? dv over dx, what do you all get? Apa nilai kamu? Yes, you will get 3x square. Correct. So let me show you the application over here huh, of this. So let's say that the x value, huh? let's say I hit this cube. Saya panaskan uh, kubus ini. So the x value change from 5 to 6. Let's say, uh, the question inform you this info. Soalan tu bagi info kat kamu. So can I ask you guys, this x over here, saya akan ganti dengan 6 atau 5? Important question. Will I sub with 5 or 6? This one you must be correct because they'll always ask you on this. Yes. Correct. Uma Faro. Betul. Always sub the value which is original sebelum perubahan tu. You must always substitute the original value before the change occur. Means that your dv over dx is 3 phi square which is 75. Okay. So let's say I give you another info over here. 
let's say lah the rate of increase yang ni soalan akan bagi kat kamu let's say the increase is 1.2 cm per second okay Dibag diberi kat kamu juga so now they want you to find what is the rate of change of volume apa kadar perubahan isi padu kubus ini so can you type out for me ah guys what is the chain rule apply here the right hand side apa kamu akan tulis What is the combination over here? dv over dx. Yes, yeah, very good. Betul. Okay. Yeah, correct. Always remember, guys, you must always have a combination where you can cancel out these two. Boleh potong dua-dua. Okay, atas dan bawah. So, this is the tip. Okay, so you can direct sub your values already. This is a simple example, but usually question will come out harder than this. Okay. Usually, mereka akan melibatkan bentuk uh, silinder, cone. Usually, they like to test on this cone shape, cylinder shape. So, all these are, guys, formula, basic for volume of cone, cylinder, semua tak diberi, uh, guys, not given. So, you all, they assume you all know this already from your modern maths. Yeah, because some people forget the formula, lupa rumus. So, tak boleh mula pun soalan. If you forget the formula, you cannot even start the question. You cannot even differentiate. Okay, so you must remember the formula. All the 3D shape, you must memorize. Pyramid, cone, cylinder, what else? Prism, uh, four of these lah, mainly. Okay, so after this, you calculate. So can you tell me what is the unit, guys, over here? Apa unit kamu? Kuasa da tinggi, yeah, yeah. What's the unit, guys, here? What should I write? Yes, very good. Cm cube per second. Okay, very good. And also, one more thing, uh, guys. Let's say uh, I change the scenario over here. This one, I want to tell a mistake I made, actually. Satu kesilapan yang saya buat masa SPM saya. I want to expose to you all a mistake I made on this question when my year SPM. So, I just... Hope this thing don't happen to you. Saya tak mau benda ni jadi kat kamu. Because very regret one. Once you do it. So I'm sharing my experience with you. Let's say lah. This cube now I cool. Saya cerjukan kubus ini. So can you expect ah guys. When I cool a cube. Does the length increase or decrease? Adakah nilai uh, panjang tu bertambah atau berkurang? Cool, cool. Cerjukan. Yes, decrease. Because when you know something is cool, it contract, right? Mengecut. Means that the size decrease. Means the length decrease. Okay? So what is the mistake I want you all to avoid over here? They'll give you a value over here. They will say length decreases. Let's say lah, the question tell like this. Panjang tu berkurang at a rate of 5 cm per second. Okay, guys, so this is what you're going to convert and write in the form of differentiation. Okay, so now I want to ask you all the important question. Wait, nah. This is the mistake I made. So I want to tell you all now so that you all don't do this. Can I know, guys, what is your dx over dt over here? Apa nilai kat sini? I want to see whether anyone fall into the trap or not. Okay, I got my first victim, Andy. I got my second victim, Swasti. Okay, now you all change already. Okay, guys, so you see this is a very common mistake. Huh? Salah satu kesilapan sangat lazim. This is also the mistake I made. Because uh, if you read very fast, baca dengan pantas, you might overlook this one, decreases. Okay, so decrease, whenever in differentiation, negative sign sangat penting. Kena letak simbol negative. Another keyword, if they give you ice, they say melts. Melts also mean decrease. Okay, another keyword I can give you. Another situation lah. Water leaking out of the tank. Okay, air uh, tu, what to say, bocor lah, pipe bocor. So, water leaking out of tank. So, the volume, when you write this one, don't forget to put the negative sign. These are the three situations I can remember from the question that come out lah. Okay, so I share with you all all this. 
Okay, guys, so make sure this one don't wrong lah, or else very kasihan. Because you all know how to do, but just because of this one small negative sign, semua salah. Because negative sign can impact your answer a lot. Okay, so uh, are you clear, guys, on the rate of change? I think I share everything already over here. Nothing else. Okay, last part. Last part is about approximate change. Then we're done already. Wait, uh, what? Perubahan kecil. Then let's talk about this part. Wow, today really a lot of theory with you guys. Lah. Until no time to do exercise also. But I feel it's worth it lah, so that you all really can understand the whole chapter. Satu bab diumuskan for you all. Small changes or approximation. Maybe we got time for one question. Lah, just one. I choose a hard one for you all. Because we go through the whole thing. Already. Okay. So when we talk about small changes or approximation, bila cakap pasal ni, what is the symbol we use here, guys? Apa tanda kita guna kat sini to show small change? Yes, very good. Delta X or you also can have delta Y. Okay, there are two possibility or anything. Kalau mereka cakap pasal quantity, can be delta area or delta volume also. So over here, I also emphasize you need to penting. You must include the unit in your final answer. If they are talking about quantities like this. Lah. If X and Y, no need unit. Lah, definitely. Okay. So, uh, if you all want to understand delta a bit more, kalau kamu nak tahu delta tu lebih mendalam and relate it to your, some of your subject, I got the perfect example for you guys. Guys, H2O. Now we talk chemistry, guys. Kita bincang pasal kimia sekejap. H2O, ha? Huh? I show you what is the meaning of delta over here. Guys, what is special about a water molecule? Apa benda paling menarik dalam sebiji molecule air? You all know this. Huh? You learn in chemistry before. Bab kimia. Eh, subject kimia. <laughs> Can you tell me, uh, guys, hydrogen? Yeah, yeah, hydrogen bond, correct? So what forms the hydrogen bond? Macam mana ikatan hydrogen to the bentuk? What is the explanation behind it? Yes, Iman Danish, electronegativity, you hit the point. Okay, so how electronegativity is, hydrogen has a slightly positive region. I like to use this example whenever I teach differentiation. Bila saya pincang pasal pembezaan, saya guna contoh ni to help you all understand. You will notice that you will give a delta positive sign over here. Okay, for those take kimia lah. I think most of y'all take, right? Okay. And for the oxygen, you will give a delta negative sign. So what is the meaning, guys? Delta positive and delta negative. Delta positive means slightly positive region. Okay, kawasan sedikit uh, electropositive. And oxygen, kawasan sedikit electronegative. So this is the relationship with the small changes over here. A slight change, perubahan sangat kecil. Means it involves decimal, the changes. Melibatkan perpuluhan saja. Okay, guys, can you see uh, the relationship over here? Boleh nampak tak hubungan that I want to explain over here to you all? Why this del the meaning of delta? Uh, so that you all really understand lah this part. Okay, so next one. Uh, we try some example lah. Okay, so this is the formula for this part. You must know this formula. Guys, can you tell me uh, what is this symbol mean? Apa maksud symbol ni? The wavy sign like that, tanda ombak. Yes, almost same or approximately the same. Not equals to, uh, guys. Bukan sama dengan. It's almost same. Why almost same? Because of the slight changes over here. Menyebabkan nilai dia hampir sama. Very close but not exact. Okay, contoh I can make. I can give you all an example. Let's say lah, 4 equals 3.99998. Ah, macam ni kamu dapat. So that is why we cannot say dy over dx equal to delta y over delta x. Sebab kalau kamu nampak, sebenarnya tak sama, not equal. Okay, so this is why it is not equal. Because of the recurring decimal. Perpuluhan yang berulang kali. Okay, so this is the concept over here lah. So how about an example? Let us see. Huh? Uh, let me find an example for you guys. 
Let me see. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's say I got equation for you all. Saya persamaan ke kamu. And they say that X increase. Okay, never mind, never mind. I don't want to increase. X decrease. Bagi lebih menarik sikit. From 1.05 to 1. Okay, berkurang dari 1.05 kepada 1. So guys, can you tell me, uh, what is the delta X over here? Again, apa nilai delta X sekarang? The question is to find the approximate change in Y. Subo cari perubahan kecil Y. Okay, very good. You all never fall in the trap already now. Must put negative, uh, guys. Kenal letak symbol negative whenever you see decrease. Okay, so how to do it? Kamu kena bezakan dululah. Based on the formula, you must differentiate the equation. So you should get 12x square minus 6x. Okay, second question. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this part interesting. Guys, x value over here. Saya ganti 1.05 atau 1. Which one do I substitute inside the x? Let me see. Huh? Um, wait. Yeah, yeah, I think 1.0. Yeah, OV value, correct, correct. 1.05, okay, correct. So you should get dy over dx is 12, 1.05 square minus 6, 1.05. So now you just have to calculate the delta y only lah. Cuba kira delta y kamu. Apply the formula again. You should get delta y is dy over dx times delta x. So you sub this one whole thing inside here and this one inside here. You count, you get the answer. Okay, so can I understand guys about this one? Small changes, boleh faham? This is the type of question they'll ask lah. But they can relate it to quantities also. Boleh hubung kait dengan quantity yang berubah. Okay, ah, another part guys, percentage change. Sometimes the question also use this. Have you seen this kind of question ah, guys? Nilai X menokok beberapa peratus. This is a famous one. They'll say the X menokok. This is the BM term, increased by certain percentage. Pernah nampak tak? Have you all seen, guys? X increased by certain percent. Okay, so how to know the uh, original value? You just have to understand the meaning of percentage, actually. Kamu kena faham maksud peratus. Okay? As we know, peratus is something over 100. Okay? Percentage to fraction. So let's say I got 50, or the one 50, 5 lah. 5% 5 means? Pi over 100. Okay, so this actually represents the change. So let us say I have x is 1. And I say x increased by 5%. So can you can you tell me, guys, apa nilai x yang baru sekarang? What is your new x value here? If I plus 5%. Very good, 1.05. So what is the delta x here, guys? Apa nilai delta x? Yes, very good. Basically, your 5% becomes your delta X. Okay, correct. The change. This is the change. Perubahan. Okay, so that's all you need to know about this percentage. So usually, if they ask the percentage change in the X, usually we will use this formula. Okay, another formula for you guys. The change, bahagi dengan original, darab 100%. You will get an answer. Okay, if they want the percentage change in X lah. Okay, this one more formula for you guys. Other than that, I think we done already. Okay, uh, guys, differentiation. I go through the whole chapter with you guys. Do you feel okay? Can understand everything I say? Boleh faham semua perkara? This is a very fast way to go through differentiation actually, but I hope it's effective lah. Because the topic is quite long. Again, as I say, you all need question to help you all. Kamu perlu buat latihan, okay, on your own, okay, to understand better. So let me find a question that can summarize everything we learned today. Semua perkara. Okay, let me see. Huh? 
Mm, okay, we try this, guys. Come. One question only today, Hita Bot. But this one tests you on everything. They test you on rate of change, approximate change, uh, first derivative, semua. Everything is here. Okay, guys. So let us see this question. So they say a metal solid with uniform cross section PQR. Okay, guys. I want you all to know this. Huh? Anyone struggle to understand this term cross section? Kelatan rentas. Anyone don't understand this term? Huh? Because this one is commonly used also. Especially bila buat bab pelan dan dongakan. When you do plan an elevation chapter in maths, they always love to use this word, cross-section. Do you all understand? Uh? Yes or no? Help me uh, try to comment so that I know. Understand? Uh? Okay, I trust you all. Uh? Okay. So, PQR is the shape of right angle triangle. Okay, this is an important info actually. They actually tell this for a reason one. Okay. If right angle triangle, guys, what formula can we use to count the area? Apa formula kita? Yes. Ah, no lah. Not theorem Pythagoras. Yes. Half times base times height. Correct. Okay. So if they didn't mention this, then you all cannot assume. Ah, tabole anggap this is a right angle triangle. They have to mention it. Okay. Kalau tak, you cannot use that formula. This. So then it's going to be very difficult actually because you need to know the angle. Kamu kena tahu sudut kat sini. Then only you can apply the sign rule or something. Okay. So, uh, let us see the question first. They say PQ is X. Just label X. PQ to QR. Uh, guys, ratio. Concept nisba. Can you all tell me what is the length of QR based on the ratio? Try to count and see. What value do you guys get? Two QR equals two. Yes, correct. Betul, Aiman Danish. Exact value. Nilai dia. Apa panjang QR dalam sebutan X? I think you all will get it lah. Five over two. Based on what Aiman Danish say, the ratio correct lah. Like this. Five over two X. Okay, so can you all express for me, first question, soalan A, what is the answer? Express the area of the triangle, what do you guys get? <laughs> if you leave again, uh, you see. <laughs> Try to solve and see guys, question A, what do you guys uh, get for part A? Just type final answer. Phi over 4x. Okay, correct guys. A equals phi over 4x square. First answer. Okay, this one you all can find very easily. Sangat senang. Just use this formula. Settle. Okay, phi over 2x times x square. Okay, so next part more interesting. B1. Okay, this part. Okay, guys. Can you all tell me 0 0.02? What is the symbol you all use here? <laughs> Apa? Tanda to represent the 0 0.02. Wow, sister already. Wow, that's close. Dx over dt. Okay, correct. Betul. Dx over dt. Yes, very good. Plus, huh? this one is plus. Cm per second. Okay, so they want rate of change in area. Okay, guys, can you tell me what is the symbol to represent rate of change in area? You should always state all this info in the question before you start to solve. Yes, very good, Zachi. DA over DT equals to question mark. You can write like this in your exam so that you know that is the thing you need to find. So, not confused. Just write only. Okay? And then they say when X is 8. This one is a useful info. Okay, la, bye. <laughs> when X is 8. Then you just substitute and see uh, your formula. La. I mean, what do you get? Okay? So, um, okay, so you need to differentiate. So, can you tell me, guys, persamaan ini, bila dibezakan, what do you all get? What is your answer? Try to differentiate and see. This one quite easy to do. This one, hey, sorry, I use different color for you guys. Wait, uh, wait. Okay, this one, this equation. Yes, 5 over 2x. 
uh, yeah, correct. Okay, so you should get dA over dx is 5 over 2x. Okay, I write out for you. And then they give you an info, guys, over here. They said when x is 8, bila x sama dengan 8. So what I should do here, guys, what to do with the 8 cm? Apa langkah dia? Yes, very good. Ganti kat sini. Just substitute over here. This is why they give you the info. So you will get 20 when you substitute. Okay. So what is the unit here, guys? Apa unit kat sini? Saya perlu tulis based on this symbol. What's the unit? Yes, very good. CM. Because CM square bahagi CM, you get CM. Okay, no second, huh, Jesh? Ah, careful, careful, Zachi. No second. This one length. X is length, huh? Panjang. Okay, because just now the side is the length. Ah, not always second. That's why I told you. Taxamastinia, all the quantity is related to time. They can relate between length also and area. Okay, they can be anything they like. And then now they ask you to find the rate of change in area. So can you guys form for me the chain rule or not? dA over dt. What is the thing on the right? Apa saya perlu tulis kat kanan? Come on guys, gambate, gambate. Gonna end the D. dA over dx times dx over dt. Yes, very good. Okay, betul. Yes, correct. 20 times 0 0.02, you will get your answer. Your answer should be 0 0.4. Unit, guys, what is the unit for this? This one? I think just now some of you told, right? CM square per second. Uh, this is the correct one for now. Okay? This time, this is the unit. Okay? So, we answer part B, the part, uh, part 2 already. So, now we look at the last one. Paling ahe. Given the thickness of the metal is X over 5 CM. Okay, uh, what is thickness? Ketebalan. Okay, so volume. How do we count volume, guys, for this type of shape? Apa formula boleh guna kat sini? This is also an important concept you all learn in modern maths, I think. Concept penting kat sini. No, no, no. No need to use like that. Very easy one, this one. No need to use all of that. What's the concept, guys? No, no, no. Not this one. Tapulu guna all this. Do you all see this, uh, guys? Cross section. Cross section. Kratan wentas. What can we do over here? How can we get the volume from the cross section? Macam mana kita boleh dapat isi padu dari kratan wentas tu? Uh, no. Just now they give you an info, guys. Thickness is x over 5. The question. Yes, exactly, betul. X over 5 times the area, betul. Because cross-section, sampai bawah ni, the shape will still be a triangle. Bila kamu cuba mampatkan pepejal ini, when you try to compress the solid, throughout the whole shape, you will still get a triangle of the same size at the base. This is why it's called keratan wentas. If you try to imagine now, guys. So how much we mampatkan is the ketabalan, the thickness, X over 5. So you just need to times this one area with this one, x over 5. Yes, vertical height, correct. Of course, that uh, ketebalan is the vertical height lah because how thick it is. We don't measure thickness horizontally. We measure it vertically. Okay, secara so, menegak. Uh, okay, so this is the concept. So what you will get after you times is uh, 1 over 4 x cubed. When you try to times this, uh, you can see my working over here. I try to show you guys. Okay, you should get something like this. Okay, so this is the concept over here. Saya guna T untuk ketebalan lah. T represent thickness. So you should get this equation. So then you differentiate it. Buat pembezaan. Isi padu terhadap nilai X. You will get 3 over 4 X square. Okay, and then... The info given over there also. They told you that the delta x, perubahan dia, they told in the question, if you saw just now. So you can count the delta x. Okay, so again, remember, eh, wait now, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Okay, 
So sub HCM, original value, nilai asal, inside your dv over dx. So you should get this value, 48 cm square. Okay, nilai kamu untuk yang ni. And then apply the approximate change formula. Kada perubahan kecil punya formula. So you sub this inside here, equals to this one. You calculate your approximate change in volume. Kada perubahan kecil isi padu. Okay, guys, are you clear for the chapter today? Good. Uh. Do you all feel better for differentiation after today? Understand better after the intensive lesson for now? Okay, good. So other question I not sempat discuss, but you all can go through by your own because I have all the solution put already here. Okay, semua penyelesaian dah ada kat sini. So later, I will send extra question for you all as usual. Voluntarily, you can do and then send to me. I'll check for you. Okay? You can do how much you want lah because I think got a lot of questions. So kamu pilih mana yang kamu suka dan buat. Okay? Anything you like lah, you just do. Okay? So finally, I give you all a quote again. Warriors are not the ones who always win. Okay? Tak semestinya pejuang tu selalu akan menang but are the ones that always fight, okay? You have to fight for your SPM, kena berjuang. Don't care about the end result, guys. Tak perlu uh, fikir banyak-banyak what is your end result. As long as you fight, you're already a winner. In my eyes lah. Dalam mata saya, kamu semua pemenang dah. If you all fight for your SPM, enough already. The grade doesn't matter at the end. It's how much effort you put for it. Okay, guys? So... I uh, hope this one help you. Anyone know? Uh, this quote from who actually? Just a random question. Siapa kata yang ni? Based on the picture over here, you can see. Who is this people? Who are these people? Anyone know? Uh? Wow, Zerchi, I definitely now know you are a BTS fan already. I think you are an army. Okay. So very good. You know the answer is BTS, correct? You can see over here. The boys over here. <laughs> yeah. But some people don't know that. You see, Jash don't know who is this, who said this quote. Yeah, seven of them. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> so, okay. A every day you learn something new. Okay. So, if you need help, you can always, again, refer to my channel. I'll upload the recording here again, okay, for differentiation. So, hope it helped you guys today.